This lesson is a continuation of the previous lesson where we were looking at controlling um, a player sprite. Uh, if you remember, we discussed the idea of having a, a player class that inherited most of the abstract sprite functionality and then just overrode it with a small bit of code that responded to the state of the mouse and included the simple idea that if you held down the mouse button it would change the colour of our sprite. So if we run it now just to have a little look, um, holding down the mouse button changes the colour. Now that's fine but it's not particularly helpful if we want to deal with the idea of being able to um, respond to a click event. Um, ideally what we want is for example, if this spaceship was firing bullets, we'd want every time the user clicked the mouse that it fired one bullet. At the moment, what would happen is we'd have a massive stream of bullets coming out because the player would have constantly been registered as the mouse button being pressed down. Now in Windows, when we create Windows applications, there's a click event already made for us, but because we're using um, XNA, which isn't naturally event-driven in everything that it does, um, we have to write our own code to create that idea of keeping track of a click. Now, it's not particularly difficult in concept, but people sometimes struggle with the idea that you have to think about things over time. So just very briefly, to make sure that you do understand what you're doing when you write this code, um, a click, effectively, is a button going from a released state to a pressed state. So its previous state is unpressed and its new state is pressed. Now what we want it to do is only fire once so just trigger when it changes from released to pressed. So we have to do that in code. So we'll close the application now for a minute because we need to write some code to do this. So currently we've got it set that its button state is pressed change its colour to red what we need to do is we need to change that so that it's clicked it changes it to red so it only occurs when the state changes so to do that we have to look at the history we have to look at the screen update previous to the one we've just triggered because update is called every screen update so every 1 50th of a second so we need to create a class variable that allows us to keep track of the previous call to the update method. Okay, so what we need is to just record the state of that left mouse button. Now if we look down in our code at the moment, we've got this idea of we can have a data type of button state, a simple button state object. So we'll create one of those. OK, a couple of things to note first of all. I've set it to private because it doesn't need to be accessible outside of our player. It's something that's for internal functionality, so it stops it getting corrupted. I've given it a meaningful variable named left mouse button, um, but we also need to deal with actually writing some code to populate that and deal with it. I've set it to an initial value of released because most people when they start a program, they generally the mouse is in that state. So, next thing is we need to write a method that allows us to signal that we've got a click or not. Now, a click could be true or false, so we can quite easily deal with that by using a Boolean data type. So we start off by making this method private, because we don't need it outside of the, the class itself. Uh, it's going to return a Boolean value, okay, and we'll call it uh, left mouse click. That seems to make sense to me. So, it doesn't need any parameters because uh, we're just reading the state variables for the mouse itself. Okay, it's got a red underline at the minute because we haven't returned the value. That will be sorted as we type the code. Okay, so first things first, we need to actually make an if statement that tracks the two states. So if we do if, so the first thing is 
what scenario do we want this to happen? Well, the previous state has to be released. The current state has to be pressed. Okay, so we're looking at that as if it's a, a sudden change of state from one to the other. So it's obviously going to require us to use a little bit of logic to allow us to do both of those states in one if state. So we'll take it with the first state, which is, is the previous state released? Now, if we look, we initialize this with button state released. All right. So we can assume that we're going to be starting at that point. So first things first, left mouse button. Button state not released. Okay, so for this to work, left mouse button must be in the condition of released in the previous call to the update method. And then we now need to use logic, so and, so as well as this, we must also check the current mouse state. So we know how to do that already. Mouse dot get state. The left mouse button, obviously. And then, as we've already said, previously it was released, now it must be pressed. So button state dot pressed. Okay, so now this if statement, what it's going to do is it's going to be true when we get to the point of button state actually being pressed now and previously released. So the pause there. Just a bit more typing. Speed presses up right there. Okay, now it's still underlined in red because we need to say, okay, obviously when the previous state's released and the current state is pressed, that means that that is a case where the mouse has been clicked. So at that point we need to return true. So we can use it further in our code, and if it hasn't been clicked, we need to return false. Okay. Now, the only thing that we now need to do is we need to also update before we return this true or false, the current state of the mouse button. Okay. Now this is to ensure that the next time round the button state reflects the fact that Currently, the button is now pressed. So the way we do that is we simply just update left mouse button. Okay, and we need to do that for both instances. We can't do this before the if statement because if we did then the if statement would never work. All right. We need to do it after we've made the decision. So just to be clear, left mouse clicked will now return true when the, la the previous frame of animation on our game, the button state was released, and the current frame of animation on our game, the button state is pressed. So that's a click. Otherwise it will return false, and then at that point we don't do anything. Now that we've done that, we can remove this bit of code and replace it with our new left mouse clicked method that we've written. Okay. So at that point now, all that should happen is our flying saucer should effectively flash red just for a fraction of a second just to demonstrate what's actually happening. Okay, now, given that video quality is always a little bit random, um, I'm doing multiple clicks there just to show you. Okay, now, once we've got this technique, what this means is, at the moment, we are tinting, for example, the colour red here. But that could just as easily be a bit of code or a call to another method that actually creates a new bullet that fires from the blind saucer. Um, or it could be that if it's hovering over something, it's doing a check to see whether or not you've clicked a button. 
So it's quite a useful technique. Um, everything that we've done here, because whether or not it's a keyboard or a mouse or whether or not it's a, a joypad, we can do pretty much the same thing all the way across the board. So it gives us the opportunity for us to have lots, lots of flexibility in terms of this simple bit of code can be reused. So that's the end of this tutorial really. Um, we haven't talked very much today about um, using game controllers or keyboard which we're going to talk about in the next lesson. Um, but I thought it was important at this point to establish a little bit of a familiarity with the idea of the fact that games occur on a regular basis you have to look at the screen updates and you need to be able to sometimes look back to the previous state just to make sure that you're actually just responding once to something rather than multiple times. Okay, that's the end of that one for today.